starting to realize really hitting home that it is all about jesus and uh we we got to realize that in our own spirits that we can do nothing without him absolutely nothing without him just want to share a scripture this morning this uh if you can put that up for us junior the first one at the top of the list it says my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life so i i um this this time has been so hard but it's also been god is with me god is with me through this and i'm trying not to get emotional But it has been a time of slowing down and actually looking at priorities. I haven't been spending as much time as what I should have been with God. And I'm realizing now that that is, and I've had so much revelation over the last couple of weeks because I've had to reach, I've had to rest. I can't do anything. I can't drive. And I've had to rest to sit down and do nothing. It's been hard to just sit there and... Uh, get myself out of myself and, and do what God's asking me to do. So it just it's it's exciting for me. I'm I'm excited but it's it's also a hard thing because I've got to change and I've changed my lifestyle. Things are coming back to normal but it's gonna it's gotta continue. And I want to encourage everyone this morning to really sincerely seek God first in everything you do. I'm I'm looking at how what what we do here I want to make sure that everything I do and that we do is what the will of God is. So we're not doing it in our own strength because then we know that it will prosper. So God, there's, there's been times where the first few days, I've, I've, all, I've, all I thought about was, what if, what if I just all of a sudden have a heart attack and then I'm a, I feel I don't want to be alone? have a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids. But this is a time that God is refreshing me. And I can feel that. I know that. He has promised me long life. And it is hard. Like I've, I've talked to people about it because obviously when things come, you, you're going to start thinking those things. But as time goes on, you start to forget them. And I've already forgot it. I've never had pain in my chest. I've never had a heart attack. So there's nothing. It's just that is God's timing too to actually see that, well, the test that I went was from another pastor who told me to go and just get a calcium score. So I did that because his, pa his brother passed away from a heart attack. So he told me to do that and my, I did that. So if, which was uh, anything closer to zero is good, but... Once you start getting into the thousands, it's not good. And I was 1,100. But I'm not not, rely not sitting on that or dwelling on that. I feel a comfort in me because God is with me and he's, his strength is going to be my, uh, my joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So I don't have any fear. Because perfect love casts out all fear. So anyway, it's just, I just want to encourage you that if you go and get checked, just go and get checked and see because it's, you just don't know. I had no symptoms. Basically, the only, the only really small one I had was that I was starting to get breathless, which is a bit of a sign of symptoms. So, um, but this, I don't want this. I want, I've got to move on and what God's got me to do, called me to do. But I'm, I'm just sitting and, and just dwelling in the presence of the Lord every day. 
and I don't want to. I don't want to come out of that. But that should be our life. That we sit and dwell in the presence of the Lord. That we get in and read the Word of God every day. And not let a day go by without us dwelling and seeking what God has for us. Read your scripture. Dwell on it. Meditate on it. And then wait and listen to what the Holy Spirit pray to God and and see what he's asking us to do. Because when the time comes, I want to hear that well done, good and faithful servant. But I want his will. That has changed me so much now. His will over mine. Every day of my life, I've had I've I've got into pat into starting to get into some routine in regards to reading the word more than what I had been, and it's just the beginning. This is a new beginning. So I do I, I feel and I know that God promised me to have long life, and it's going to happen. So let's let's. Thank you for all your prayers and words of encouragement. I've had so much come in and that's been been a blessing to me. And I just want to thank Bernie and the kids for doing so much over the last week and a couple of weeks that they've just, without a question, they've done it. They've shown me what it really truly is to love someone. See, I wasn't born up in a Christian family, but Bernie was, so they know what it is. I'm looking forward to Jesus showing me that way as well. So you're going to see God. I just pray that all of you really do seek God in your, what, you, what you do. And don't let a day go by without seeking his presence. Amen. So we are in a joyful season. This is the reason for the season. It is Christ. It is come to us. And let us rejoice. It is Christmas Eve. So it is a happy time. And it is such a blessed time because God sent his only son to save us, redeem us, reconcile us, bring back peace with us with God. So let us get into some worship this morning and really lift our, he- our hearts to him. Amen. Amen. You'd like to stand?
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and never pining till he so felt its worth, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder praise, a new and glorious morn for So led by the light of the stars sweetly gleaming, he came the wise men from Orient land. The King of Kings lay thus in
Thank you, Jesus. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We thank you that you came from heaven as a babe to be born for us and to die for us so that we, Lord, can have eternal life in you. We praise you this morning, Lord. No words can describe the majesty that you are, the providence that you are, Lord. Help us to see that, Lord, and the sovereignty of God and to know that you, Lord, have your best intentions and plans for each and every one of us that are in this building right now. Good intentions, Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm because he knows the thoughts he has for each and every one of us. And to have an expected future, expected end, and that is eternal life with you. Lord, you are amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for humbling yourself. Thank you, God, for sending your Son. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just quickly, I don't want to dwell on this. So what I actually had happen was I had two stents put in, one a five-centimeter one and one a two-centimeter one. So I had th two major blockages, 50 to 75%, and there was another smaller one, um, but the... The bigger stent has actually got both of those up, or two, so I've it covered everything, so everything else is fine. But uh, I shouldn't have to just believe because the doctor said it. God should tell me, and he is. My heart is strong. There is nothing wrong with my heart. It is, he's good. He was happy with that. And he actually, the first Wednesday that I, was, I went to hospital, I was meant to get the stents then, but they gave me a choice. Gave me a choice, so I think I've said that anyway, that he'd either open heart, or stents, so I didn't want my chest open at this point in time. <laughs> I'm only 49. But God is good, and I'm believing, as I read that scripture this morning, the, me the, the more I continue in his word and dwell on his word, it's going to bring health to my body. It will happen with you too if you do the same. And he, <laughs> he has his favor for you for the rest of your life. Just submit. Just submit to him. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone. Good to see everyone here this morning. Let's go through the announcements. So welcome to Grace Church. If, do we have any visitors this morning? don't think we do. No? Yes? What was your name, sorry? Philip? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, welcome to stay afterwards, have coffee and cake in a hospitality area. So I've brought carrots and celery. So I'm fine. It's all good. Changes are happening, people, I can tell you. Because <laughs> I don't I want to be around. I want to be I've got a job to do, as Alexander said to me this morning. So I've got to bring my kids up. I've got to finish doing that. I've got to finish my married life with Bernie. Yeah, there is. We bought enough. So we're gonna we provide a healthy option <laughs> from now on. So I I haven't you know, I haven't haven't yearned for anything. I've tried this before but because it was in my own strength. But now it's God doing it. He's driving me to do that. It's the Holy Spirit of me that's allowing me to be able to do this. So I'm seeing changes in my body already. I, <laughs> I'm awake at 5 o'clock in the morning now, so maybe I'm getting enough sleep already. Maybe I was getting, I was because I was tired as well before. But uh, I said to Bernie this morning, what am I going to do? 5 o'clock in the morning, I can't, I can't get back to sleep. Oh, I'm going to be doing that. Maybe that's God telling me that's the time to get up and uh, do that. I'm going to <coughs> we I'm going to be doing that anyway because we normally come down and pray in the morning. But yeah, I just 
it's my time with God. And that's going to keep going, hey? Praying in tongues, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. So this is a letter. I can't even see that. This is a letter from um, Judy Wilson from the States thanking us. This is, uh, yeah, so th- they gave, we gave them an, o- an offering. The Four Square are also giving them an offering for this. And she just, uh, thank you for your offering in memory of the dear Richard and for your love and prayers for our family. This body of believers will always hold a special place in my heart and in my prayers. We love and appreciate you, Pastor Judy Wilson and family. Please pray for me as I begin a new life and find a new normal without my husband, but with, what's that say? But with with love, comfort, strength and guidance of the Lord. So she just, this is uh, so just a thank you to Grace Church. They are, uh, yeah, it's good. Next slide. So we have a few birthdays coming up this week. Meme Sele, I think yours is today, isn't it? Happy birthday. We better sing happy birthday. Can you do that, Sash? Everyone else sing with her. All right, ready? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Meme. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> So happy birthday, Meme. There's also Sasha and Amos's birthday this week coming up. And uh, and there's more. Oh, there's a few more. Wow. Laurel Tapel, it's her birthday this week too. Day after Sasha's. <laughs> and Pastor near my Coravada. So yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday to all you. It's it's he has got a milestone birthday, so is he sixty. So we're having a cake next Sunday. So we'll we'll provide a cake. Uh, I'll bring my celery and carrots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, carrot cake, yeah. It can, we, there is such a thing as a diabetic cake, isn't there? Yeah, right, eh? Yeah. I p- no, no. no. <laughs> that, that was my favourite cake. No. <laughs> was. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm, having, I'm actually going to have a little bit of a uh, trifle on Christmas Day, though a little bit so that's a special occasion but i'll be straight back on the horse afterwards so it's good anyway happy birthday to all those so yeah nehemiah is 60 coming up so uh yeah we'll, we'll celebrate that with him what's on this week so wednesday 6 30 p.m music practice here at grace church thursday 4 to 6 p.m bread outreach so we've actually started the roster with that uh thank you for all those that have come on board you know it's amazing that we're getting more and more people coming on board in the roster. And we can't do this, not not just a few people. It's got to be everyone playing their part, and we, we're finding that. And that, that, that brings us closer together as a church. So people need a rest. We can't just have the same people doing the same things or the different jobs and trying to spread them out or yeah, too much because we've got to look after them too. So it's, it's amazing. I thank you for everyone who plays a part on the roster that does that and, and just prayer I'm sure a lot of people offer up prayer for this church so we're, we've got the new roster out actually so if you haven't picked it up off the information table Harry might have handed it to you um, that's there your name is highlighted on the areas and the dates that you that you are required so uh, Sunday 9.30 a.m. prayer in the boardroom as always so prayer Wednesday nights is in recess um but other than that, I think everyone, everything else is going ahead. The Tapwell Home Group is in recess, Bible College in recess. So I think, yeah, we just have a time of rest. Um, so the church is closed from today after. So we, we still have, uh, we'll still have a service next Sunday, Aldo. So, but no, the, the church, just the office is closed. So we, we have that for a week and then it'll reopen on, I think, on the third. Is that coming up on a slide anyway? <clears throat> on the 3rd of January so but I'm, I'm going to take three weeks off in that time too so I'll have a bit of a month month off and just to just spend some time with my family and just resting and it would be a good time go fishing yeah I've already said that yeah we will we'll, we'll go fishing yeah we'll catch a maybe we'll get a 
cod that's of legal size and give it to Nehemiah. That'd be good. Next slide. Christmas Eve service. So this afternoon, Grace Church at 4 p.m. I'll be speaking. So yeah, invite invite as many people as you can to come along and just let's let's just worship God, worship Jesus, because He is why we're here. And uh, we're singing some carols, some more carols, and uh, we'll just we'll only go for about an hour, and afterwards we'll share in some fruit cake and lemonade. Uh, where were we the other day? We went out for for dinner, and uh, the gentleman who you know does everyone know Graham from uh, the Leagues Club, the tall skinny guy, uh, very well good. He's got uh, the amazing customer service, been well trained. So we had our dinner, and then the, there was myself, Alexander, Les Laurel, the kids, and Bernie, and he comes around and hands out a uh, a drumstick each. Ice cream, so it's uh yeah. I mine stayed there. He actually took it back to the the uh, freezer. But it's just it just shows you how temptation can come when you're trying to do things right. I'm not giving in. So I, I truly believe that I, I, I'm going to be healthier soon, maybe in a couple of years than I've ever been before in my life. God's good. Amen. Next slide. Tithes and offerings, so if I can please have the uh, ushers come forward and receive the tithes and offerings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that all our our finances are from you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for just faithfulness of bringing the tithes into the storehouse, Lord. Jesus, you are you're amazing. We just pray that all our bills are paid for sooner rather than later. Every single bill in this church that we have, Lord, that they will be paid in full. Father, just help us to to not stress, Lord, but to to just lean on you and know that you are our provider, that we that, that our that our bills are paid and the running of this church is, Lord Jesus. But Lord, as we move for, move on forward in your plans and purposes that we have, I pray, Lord, for more souls into your kingdom. Lord, that we can we can be your hands and feet. And we thank you that there's a Holy Spirit who will build the church. It's his job to convict people, Lord pray that we can be bold in in speaking your truth in love when we share the message to those who need to hear it lord and lord i I pray for anyone who does who's lost hope over this christmas period lord that you just touch their heart put someone in their place lord to teach them and to show them about jesus thank you for your for, for the discipleship lord that we can help one another on this journey and what an amazing journey it is, Lord, that we, it's not about ourselves, but it's about us sharing what you have given us freely, Lord Jesus. So freely this morning we give back to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so we'll have time of communion. Uh, I think Pastor Nehemiah is going to share in communion this morning. And uh, he is also doing our message, so please make him feel welcome. Amen. How are you all? Amen. This is a smiling church. I want you all, when I stand, everyone, just keep a smiling face. It's an act of worship to God through your smile and say, Lord, thank you. It's an acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That He is in the house. 
our Savior. Amen. That is what I'm going to preach about today. But first of all, we're going to communion. I'm going to preach about for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And I believe the world is uh, preparing, focusing on the return of Jesus as King. But just make sure that you don't miss to meet the Savior first. Are you getting me? Are you hearing me? We heard about in the last couple of months what God is doing in this church. And when I say church, I, I'm referring to the body of Christ, not only in here, but also worldwide. The progress of the journey that started. Where whether you are in the middle, whether you already started, whether you haven't started yet in your spiritual walk with the Lord. And I pray that this Christmas will bring a meaning that this message today about communion. And I believe last couple of months God spoke to me chapter 2. And I said, what is that? And as we begin to move forward as a church, we'll begin to hear from us preachers and what the Holy Spirit is doing, will understand further, more, bigger, deeper, what chapter 2 means to you. And when that message comes to you, you move. You adjust. You change. Chapter 2 of this is about the chapter 2 his coming, the soon coming king. This is what all about chapter one. That you're going to meet him as savior, as lord of your life. I don't want you to hear a message that, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. God has a perfect plan and will for this day. The birth of Jesus Christ. God has a perfect plan and will in chapter 2 about his soon coming. And today I'm going to preach about the Savior. You're going to listen and hear preachers today preaching about this. And the door is still open. When it's over, when it's done, he's, he's going to come in as king. During this time, as you are hearing me talking today, inviting you to come, not only to come, We just receive this, understand what it's all about. Some people are saying the days, the 25th, oh, he died, we worshiped here on Sunday, on a Saturday. When you go to heaven, what matters is, are you responding to his great love? that is presenting to the world as we mark the day tomorrow. 
So as we're going to come and partake today, I'm calling you inside of you. I'm calling the men inside there to come up. That is when things change. When you receive him in spirit. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? I'm speaking inside of you. Not just the body inside. No, inside of that. That which that Christ has died for on the cross. Amen? Are you happy? What I'm happy about today is I'm celebrating. Because even though the Bible says I'm a sinner. But in God's sight, I'm righteous. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why you should jump inside the church. That's why you should be thankful. Lord, thank you. Even though I'm a sinner. You prepare a place for me. As you are coming, visualize that place because of this. The Bible says the, the floor, the, the ground is pure gold. Amen. I'm happy that my place is prepared. Hallelujah. I invite the ashes to come. As you are coming up. To receive the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord thank you. That I am forgiven. Just ask you to please. Can you make your way up. Hallelujah. It's all about the spiritual progress. It's all about what God is doing. Transition, restoring, sanctification. The last couple of months, God is preparing this church to come deeper in the relationship with him. That relationship that transforms lives, change lives, restore lives, give life hope. I invite you to make your way as you are ready to come. And you come and humbly receive. And just say, thank you, Lord. For saving me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about hallelujah, the journey to heaven made possible through the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever that is going on, whatever the desire, whatever 
your plan, whatever that you're going through, Jesus had covered it all. Be at peace. You're okay. You might look around the world, the worries of the world. But Jesus is telling you, you are okay. Because I am in the boat. The worries of what you've done, the guilt, you are okay. Because of me. Settle in your heart. Be a man that is so content with Jesus. Sometimes we, we don't really understand. But he's saying to you right now, you are okay. You are okay. Because of me. So when you partake, just tell him, thank you for that assurance that I'm okay. Maybe some worries might come, but Jesus is saying, I am. I can do it all. You are okay, my son. Just serve him with freedom. Serve him with thanksgiving. In your own words, just tell him that and partake. Hallelujah. He's a covenant God. Hallelujah. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. You are okay. You are okay. What separate man from God is sin. But with Jesus, he's saying, you are okay. Okay? He's smiling at you. He's reassuring you, you are okay. You worship me, that I am your Lord, and I am your Savior. Let's partake. Amen. Father, thank you for your promises. Thank you for the benefit of Calvary. Thank you for your assurance. Thank you, Lord, for eternity. Thank you that our place has been prepared. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you that you always uplift. Thank you for your everlasting love. We just give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' powerful name. And everybody said amen. And amen. And amen. Okay, kids. Oh, they already. Collect, collect the cups, kids. Amen. Just move around a little bit. Just shake someone's hands. Just relax a little bit. Give you five minutes. Then I'll start. Amen. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey, 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 hey. Don't go away. I'm going to read.
Okay, just try and make your way back to your seat, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of you who are watching online, welcome to the house of God in this very beautiful day. Christmas Eve, tomorrow is Christmas. From January, time is going so very fast. Time is ticking, and we are here again one day away from Christmas. Amen. For there is, can you put Luke two eleven, please? For there is born to you this day, in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ, the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our head. Father, we come humbly before Thee, O God, at this very important time that you speak to us your children but I thank you for everything thank you that we'll realize how important our life is to you oh God thank you for your plan and I just pray Holy Spirit that you will guide us teach us to see the deeper meaning of Christmas and why we celebrate why you allow your only begotten son to come to the world I pray we'll know the meaning and the reason and Lord I just thank you that you will help us to see where we are and to make decision as you speak help me O oh Lord to be a vessel and an instrument so that you can speak through my life to your people. That every word that come out from my mouth is the revelation inspired by the Spirit of God. 
flow through me that will become life-giving to the ear that hear your voice today. And we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' powerful, mighty name. We pray. Amen. 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 As we look around the world today, things have been happening. And many progress in the world in the way that they do things. But today I'll be focusing on to the kingdom of God. There is a, a, a culture of the world and there is a culture of the kingdom of God where God wants to make you know and understand and also me to know and understand. Amen? Hallelujah. We have been hearing the word of God has been preparing you and me in this journey. We are on this journey. Amen? To heaven. And along the way, amen, we thank God that we meet him as Savior, as Lord of our life. In a few days' time, I'm going to be 60. Hallelujah! in this world, but I'm 25 in that world. Amen. That is where I'm, I want you to focus today. Don't just celebrate your 60th birthday here in this world, but you also must celebrate the birthday of your or original and your destiny. Jesus started it and he's going to finish it as soon coming king. Hallelujah. And along the way, hallelujah, I pray that you're going to meet him also as healer and the baptizer of the Holy Spirit to keep doing what you're doing here on earth while you're waiting. Hallelujah. Welcome Christmas. Hallelujah. You're not just going to celebrate. Hallelujah. The way the world celebrate. Hallelujah. Okay, you're going to celebrate. But deep inside of you. Hallelujah. You're going to celebrate. Hallelujah. Because you are on your way to heaven. Where Jesus has prepared a place for you. Hallelujah. And the ground is pure gold. Amen. And every, the walls is full of stones. Amen. You name it. The girls love those. Different kind of stones, beautiful, but Jesus has already prepared the place for you. Amen. So what I'm going to share about today that this man, I'm going to talk about this man when he and why God Himself allowed His only begotten Son. Jesus Christ to come into this world. Why? The sovereign, holy, blameless, without sin, and he allowed his only begotten son to come into this world. You have to know the reason. Because if you don't know, you'll miss everything. You'll miss everything. This is the stepping stone. When you realize the history, why this man, why this child has to come on earth. And then you fully understand why he has to die and why he has to come back. Hallelujah. When I'm going to talk about this man, you're going to realize that this man has come and live a life as an example, as a way of how we live life here on earth when you are not originally a citizen of this world, but you are a citizen of heaven. Otherwise, you will be someone living a life. There is no direction. 
of your life on what you do and what you say. The Bible says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm not only going to share about the love of Jesus Christ today. I'm also going to share about the truth of him. And that truth is for you to know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that no one perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. But if you, one, in this room, and all those who you are watching, the message of Christmas is the message to the world. It's an open message. It's a general message. But only those who benefit, those who incline their ear and say, yes, this is for me. This gift is for me. And you have to receive it. This is a gift from God. The wrap inside is the very perfect will and his ultimate love for you. Because when he created you, he wants to spend time everlasting with you. That is the deepest love. I went back to Fiji for two months. In Fiji, the culture of, uh, of where I come from. If someone, I, I believe I've shared that already here. If someone wrong you, you have to offer him a whale's tooth. It is the highest gift that my culture have is the whale's tooth. And when you offer that to someone, it shows how remorse you are. That deep inside, you offer him, please, forgive me. And here we have the God himself who created you and me. That mankind, you and me, disobeyed. And we walked out from that covenant when we were there. And God is, is perfect love is pleading for you. Please, come back to me. Come back to me. Don't take for granted that perfect love of God. He offered his only begotten son to the cross. That is the second part. But the first part, he was born. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior. To save you from what? The very purpose why he was born. The perfect plan of God in there. It wasn't easy. And they walk around. There was no room there. If it's okay for the mighty God to allow his son to be born in a manger so that you can have an opportunity and have a door for you that opens the gate for you to come back to him. It is, and God is saying to you today, I'm offering this to you. Will you receive it? Hallelujah. Christmas is the beginning of the perfect plan of God to take you back home. I have went there and res registered my children in one of the books that we have in Fiji. All those that have born before me and all those who are going to be born after me, they re registered in a book. When my son is going to go to Fiji and speak English, if they don't know him, his name is in this book. Oh, yes, he's got a portion of land because I'm his father. 
That is why Jesus has to come. So that your name can be registered in the book of life. Okay, church. Are you getting me? That is the true meaning of Christmas. That is the true meaning of Christmas. He give you the opportunity. If he's the sovereign God, he cannot violate the laws of this land. And he allows his son to be born, to become a human being. Hallelujah. To show you this is how I honor. Hallelujah. Everyone has to come from Fiji. We need a visa to come here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just make sure that you don't feel good just coming to church. You have to have that assurance that Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. I have to meet him here. Hallelujah. When the trumpet sound, when he return as king of kings, then you will meet him on the sky. The Bible says, when the trumpet sound, those who are dead in Christ shall rise up first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's coming back as king of kings. But I'm preaching today, I'm preaching about a savior of the bull that was born the very day tomorrow. And that's why I celebrate because I've got him in me. Hallelujah. This is the greatest gift that you can have. You can have for your family, that you can have for your marriage. Hallelujah. This man transformed. This man saved. This man encourages. This man got life in him. Full package. Hallelujah. Christmas. Hallelujah. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Christian followers, believers should be people that excite because they are carrier of life. If you are dull, then you have to ask some questions. Hmm? I have to spend more time in his presence. I'm going to talk to him a lot. Hallelujah. I'm going to fellowship with him a lot so that his life, his everything is going to rub on you. Hallelujah. When he say we can't do it, you say we, I can. Hallelujah. I remember the time I was in Canberra. Someone speaking to me, say, sign here, everything has been closed. I said, I don't want to do it because I'm hearing someone talking to me who is my savior, my redeemer, and my healer. Hallelujah. If you want to go forward, hallelujah, with everything that's going to be thrown in you, you are someone who's going to be different in your testimony. You are someone who's going to be different in your confession because someone is talking to you. I'm with you. You are okay. Go this way. Do this. Hallelujah. The time will come that the world, we don't know what, how we're going to fix this world. Hallelujah. For there is born to you this day. It's the city of David, a savior who is Christ the world to save this world. Hallelujah. Are you prepared to receive him today? What kind of man is he? Hallelujah. What kind of man is this man? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just put on Luke 1, 35, please. Hallelujah. 135. We're going to talk about this man, how he was raised, so that we can learn a little bit from him. Luke 1, 31, 35. For behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name. What? Jesus. Abraham. Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you call out loud, when you know the meaning, it penetrates into the spirit realm. Jesus. Amen? Not Jesus. What's this? I'm a rugby player. When I stand up in the confrontation, I stand up with aura. Hallelujah. When I stand up, they say, when they look at you, they run over you. You are scared. No, we are Christian. We are more than a conqueror. Because more inside of you than those who are out there. Amen. When the spirit comes, want to run around in your house, you order to get out in Jesus' name. No, please get out. Ah, pray, 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 pray. Sometimes things are happening to you, just ignore it. One time I was in the hospital. I was admitted in the hospital. And I was just really on fire. I don't want to pray. I tell the devil, I'm not going to pray. The time I'm going to go and visit, I'm going to visit. The time I'm going to worship, I'm going to worship. You worship with me until you are fed up and just go. Amen. Born today is a savior of the world. The savior of your problem. The savior of your chaos. The savior of everything. If you don't know the way forward, he is a savior. He save you and direct you and lead you home. And then that man, tomorrow we remember him. That's the man who saved me 25 years ago. I'm 60 today. Tomorrow, uh, this few days, but I'm 25. Hallelujah. I'm 25 spiritually. Amen. So little youth, take your time. Don't be frustrated when things are not going all right. Everyone, don't be frustrated when things are not going right. Amen. Because Jesus is saying you are okay. As long as I'm in the boat, you'll reach the other side. The assurance come from God. Eh? The fear come from the devil. Hey, hey, this is what's going to happen. What about this? What about that? What about that? Huh? The reality will come. What I'm saying is this. As long as Jesus was born this very day, you are okay. Hallelujah. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of the father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there will be no end. I'm talking about, hallelujah, a place. And that place, hallelujah, you are going to unless you are born again. Hallelujah, you cannot enter that place. And Christmas is the opportunity, hallelujah, to give you, hallelujah, the opportunity to enter into that place. Hallelujah. Amen? All right. All right. Bring it on. As long, hallelujah. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I do not know the man. Hallelujah. Talking about the conception. Hallelujah. Go please to Luke 2.11. Hallelujah. Talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just make sure. Hallelujah. When I'm <coughs> taking you through this message. That you can see your life in this message. You can see yourself. Hallelujah. You need to be conceived. Hallelujah. I'm talking about that life. The 25 years of my life. 25 years ago, I was conceived by the Holy Spirit when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And that life in which that I'm preaching now was conceived. Amen? I just don't come to church and play good and go back and Merry Christmas. No, be real that your name is in the book of life. That's what Jesus came to open for you. Be so thankful, be so happy, and honor this name, Jesus. Amen? Who is your Savior? Hallelujah. Luke 2, 11. 
Where there is. Okay, we carry on more down, please. Luke 2, 21. We talk about the circumcision of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Hallelujah. This is the pilling, the taking away of the first queen, the first king. This is a covenant. Hallelujah. Signify. Hallelujah. The cross of Jesus Christ. This is a spiritual circumcision of your heart so that you become the one that Jesus has covenant with his father. And to you when you give your life to him. Hallelujah. When you confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. In your mouth. And you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead on the third day. You will be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is the man that I'm talking about. When eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child. Amen. That has to happen. That has to happen to everyone. That is on their way to that place. Heaven is real. It is a place prepared. I'm going to prepare a place. Heaven is a place prepared. And this is the door. Christmas. When you know this, then when you eat and when you celebrate, it is meaningful. Make sure it's meaningful to you this Christmas. Meaningful here and also there. When I'm saying this, when you do what he instructed you to do, then his will will fulfill in your life. Amen? Luke 2, 22, Jesus presented in the temple. The upbringing of this child was born. Amen. Jesus was presented in the temple. Leave it there. Look to 51, 52. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. This is when he was about 12 years old. This is where I want you to settle on this. A 12 year old boy learned something from the very early age of his life. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. Subject to who? To the parents. For his upbringing. But his mother kept all these things in her. And Jesus was increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and in men. Hallelujah. Just make sure what the meaning of Christmas to you has some benefit in your life. Amen. I say it again. Christmas has to have a benefit. And that benefit is for you to have eternal life. It is the beginning. It is the birth of your life. But if it hap never happened to you, make this day a day to remember that that day I was conceived when I received 
Jesus Christ as Lord, as Savior of my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Then what is the meaning of to subject someone? To subject your life or to someone, you subject to someone. What is the real meaning of that? And Jesus subject to them. One description to willingly and voluntarily place yourself under their authority or control or influence. You see, I come into this church. I have, the church did not give me any obligation. I, I subject myself. I give myself. Why? To benefit me. He didn't force me, the senior pastor, to do anything. I give my life under his authority and his leadership. Why? To benefit me in my work. Jesus subject. I'm willingly, I drove all the way from Lytton here. Willingly, nobody forced me. Because I know it benefits my spiritual life. It causes me something. But it brings joy to me. It brings stability to me. It brings direction to me. It brings vision to me. It, it enlarges the way I, I bring. I subject. Amen. Willingly. Voluntarily. Under the authority or the control or the influence. Hallelujah. Second, it can involve willingly following their guidance, obeying <coughs> their command, and accepting their decision. Hallelujah. Accepting. At the very height of that very day, very day, when Jesus was confronted at that very age to do the Father's will, was confronted. He was young. He tried to make reason. He was sweating blood. And he's contemplating everything. But he was obedient to his father. And he said, Father, if it, is, if it is possible that you take away this cup, but not my will, but your will. Hallelujah. He subject himself to, uh, to the authority, hallelujah, of his father. He was obedient. Hallelujah. That is all what Christmas is all about. To make you obedience into the fulfillment of the law. All are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. If you're someone following the law, you cannot follow everything about the law because the Bible said all men are sinners. You have to appreciate what Jesus has done on the cross. When you appreciate it, you someone created new in your willingness and your obedience to give everything out from your heart. From the that makes a difference. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Christmas is beautiful. Amen. It is a joyful occasion. Amen. Because I know who I am. Hallelujah. I know who I am in Jesus. That's why Christmas is so important to me. Hallelujah. Why is Christmas so important to you? Hallelujah. Why is Christmas so Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Do you have a story? Hallelujah. Because things have happened. 
Yes, I was born in 1998. I have a story. I have a testimony along the way. I've shared some testimony with my brother. The excitement. Hallelujah. When I told them yesterday, when you are surrounded with a pack of lions, then you know that the lion of Judah is in you. Hallelujah. It's about, hallelujah, time that we give all with a willingness to worship him. My Savior. If you cannot say, worship him in a Savior, that you have no chance to worship him as king. You are false. That's false hope. Without being saved, you are non-existent in the kingdom of God. And your name is not in this book. Here on world, I'm referring to that book of life in heaven. Hallelujah. Just make sure in everything that you do, you are busy in the church. Hallelujah. That your name is written in the book of life. Hallelujah. Because... Born today is a savior of the world. This is a general call. How good is this God? Hallelujah. Even the ugly sinners, he loved them all. Some are saved already. And some are not yet double-minded. There will come a time when the trumpet sound that I will no more preach about the Savior. You will meet the King of Kings that will answer to him. Why? Why? God allows his only begotten son to be born in a major. Not only say that he loves you, he demonstrates that he loved you. So that it can sink into your mind. How much he loves you. Hallelujah. Born this day is a savior. Smile. Hallelujah. If it's not, make a decision. Today is going to be your day. Not only for you to have life. You, your family, your tribe, your clan, and your nation. If you're watching me from the world, this is your message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that no one perish but to have everlasting life. Amen. I have already have a song prepared for my time of departure. Amen. Why? I'm happy. Anytime he calls me, I'm, I'm going. But during this time when God has given you, do your best. Hallelujah. There is no other best unless you do things according to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's your best. Hallelujah. Amen. So Christmas is a day of celebration. To celebrate not only your life in here. To celebrate that you have eternal life with you. Amen. That is a true and perfect love. Don't ride into that boat. <laughs> Fake love. I'm enjoying the blessings of God. God loves me. Yeah, of course. But it doesn't mean, without accepting, he doesn't going to send you to. He won't send anyone. I'm telling you. You're the one who's going to take yourself there. You're the one because you are rejecting what he's saying to you right now. Listen. The voice, the spoken word of God. And God spoke to his people. Tell my people, tell my people. He told Moses, tell my people. And I'm here. Just tell my people that I love them very, very, very much. But that love doesn't cancel for the wages of sin. The only thing that cancel, and you are safe. Okay, that is enough message for this Christmas. 
Then when you jump, the king of kings, he has your, it, it has a meaning behind it. When you jump inside the chair, he has some meaning. Rock solid because you know when the time is up. Amen. I used to be scared a little bit before about death. Now I, I'm sort of like the Holy Spirit changes that. It changes that all around. You know? We, we, we've been talking about adversity. We've been talking about transformation, sanctification, glorification. Why we teach this in the church? Why do we teach that? Hallelujah. Because heaven is a holy place. At least do something. When God tells you something, do it. The rest, leave it for him. Amen. Clap your hands. Do at least something. Both the cover man and I'm doing a car. Who want a clo? And a normal tire out. Don't anybody knows that? Yeah. And if you just get dressed like that, just at least do something for God. Amen. Just do something. Make him happy. When he was 30 years old, the beginning of his ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can celebrate heaven. But don't be like some lazy Christian just sitting down. Hmm? Why I'm saying that? Why I'm saying that? I meant it. Because God is preparing his church for the difficult times is in front. When you go, when you enter those difficult times, you enter with power. You enter with precise. You enter with clear vision. You enter with clear hearing. And you just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. If not, you'll be running around, running around, and running around. Hallelujah. A few months, it is a concern in my heart about the condition of our readiness, the condition of the attitude of believers. God is speaking. It will be like the days of Noah. When God is talking, people are busy with the things. I know that we are busy, but... Hmm? Hallelujah. I pray that this Christmas is a joyful Christmas that you have a biggest, the ultimate presence that anyone can ever receive that is Jesus. Amen. Let's close. I ask the worship team to come up. This is the ultimate. If you are looking for something, hallelujah, to take you around in this world, Hallelujah, can empower you, can take you through the hard times that you know and know and understand how to negotiate life. Hallelujah. Receive this gift. Hallelujah. This gift will open doors. This gift will bring life. This, this gift, hallelujah, when it's presented to the world and the world is sleeping. Hallelujah. When you walk out this door, make sure that you receive. Hallelujah. Hello. It's all about Christmas. Why Jesus has to be born to come and save the world. Hallelujah. For the mystery and everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring it. Hallelujah. Yes. Present it to him today. Hallelujah. Amen. Just clap your hands and thanking God. God, thank you that you are reminding us what Christmas is all about. It's not just Mary and giving here and giving there. Hallelujah. It's about a perfect love. Hallelujah. Wrap inside the truth. And that truth is Jesus is born this very day. 
I'm happy, hallelujah, that I have a Savior. And I'm also so very happy because my Savior will soon come back as my King. Hallelujah. Confess him today a Savior, hallelujah, of your life. And let him be the healer of your life. And let him be the baptizer of your Holy Spirit in your life. And let it be more importantly, hallelujah, that he's soon coming king, that you're going to meet up with him when he comes back. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Otherwise, it's nonsense. Hallelujah. Just eating and eating and eating. Hallelujah. 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 Let's all stand and sing and be happy. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to save me. Thank you, Jesus, that you was born, that you opened the door for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go tell it on the mountain. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That Jesus Christ is born. Hallelujah. I take this opportunity to those of you who are watching online on behalf of Grace Church, the senior pastor, Pastor Nigel Halliburton, and all Grace Church here in Griffith, New South Wales. We wish you a happy Christmas. May the joy of Jesus Christ, the reason why he was born, so that you can share it in your life, in your family, in your tribes, in your clan, in your nation. Hallelujah. I encourage you, let's all rise up. Hallelujah. In this season of Christmas, to declare that Jesus is Lord and sing his praise. Hallelujah. So may God bless you, your family. May you do well because Jesus is in your house. Hallelujah. Bless you. To all those of you who are here, members of Grace Church, I also take this time on behalf of the senior pastor. May I wish you a Merry Christmas and a blessed season. May the joy of Christ riches in your heart. 
fill you with a joy. May he uplift you and bless you. May he walk before you and surround you. May he's the pillar of cloud all in the day and fire at night. May his name be glorified. Let's sing it one more time and celebrate that Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Thank you that you are Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are Savior of the world. And we acknowledge you, Holy Spirit of God. May you fill us. May you direct us. And may you help us. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. For the great things. Hallelujah. That we understand the true meaning of Christmas. That you allow your son to be born. That opens the way for us to eternity. Hallelujah. We boldly confess today that Jesus is Lord. And is returning. Hallelujah. As king of kings. May his kingdom live forever. And also we are forever with you. And we praise you in Jesus mighty name. We pray. Come up offering. Thank you, Pastor Nehemiah. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Don't forget, 4 o'clock is our um, Christmas Eve service, so come and come and join in again. Um, and I'll share a little bit of a message too. So it'll only go for about an hour. So, yeah, look forward to seeing you all here. And uh, invite someone else to come along too and enjoy and maybe even receive Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Amen.